Today we're going to talk about differential equations as mathematical models. It's going to be beyond our scope to actually go through a full modeling process iteration with any of our differential equations today. And it's also going to be beyond our scope to do any solving of the differential equations that are these models. What we are going to do today is we're going to look at the various differential equations that we can set up in different application situations that are great mathematical models for the situation given. So again, the focus of today is going to be being able to set up these mathematical models, these differential equation mathematical models in situations, not actually solving them. As we move forward in the course, then we'll start working towards actually being able to solve these differential equations, and we'll be working more through the full modeling process as we move forward. First, we're going to talk a little bit about what a mathematical model is. What's the mathematical modeling process? What's the purpose? Well, mathematics is a tool. It's a tool to solve real world problems. So the goal of mathematical modeling is to take a real world problem, to make some assumptions and define some variables and figure out the relationship between these things we're interested in, to develop a mathematical model, which takes us over into this mathematics realm. Now the mathematics realm has equations that we can solve and we can get numbers as answers, we can get other equations as answers, whatever our goal is. So we'll do all of this in this mathematics realm. And then once we have the solution that we desire, we're going to translate it back into the real world and check and make sure that it actually makes any kind of sense in the real world context that the problem was given in. Now, differential equations are an incredibly useful tool for developing mathematical models. That's because differential equations include a rate of change in them. And a lot of the things that we notice in the real world have some kind of relationship to some kind of rate of change. Over time, they change. That's the most common way that they change, or they might change over a horizontal distance or over a vertical distance. It depends on the problem. But differential equations allow us to account for that rate of change in our equation. So some really common differential equations at our mathematical models, we use the equation, the derivative of P with respect to T, equals k times p when we're talking about the population. p is the population, t is time. Now the thing that looks kind of like an alpha, what that's saying is it's saying that the change in the population with respect to time is an integer multiple of the population itself. So it's a constant multiple. We'll see that symbol a decent amount. So make sure that you're kind of internalizing that symbol. Another way to write it is just to say the derivative of P with respect to T is equal to a constant, say K times P. We also talk about differential equations when we're talking about radioactive decay. We can talk about the change in the area with respect to time being a constant multiple of the area. Newton's law of cooling and warming also is a differential equation. When we model the spread of a disease, we use a differential equation. When we model chemical reactions, we use a differential equation. When we model mixtures, we'll use a differential equation. Series circuits, we'll use a differential equation. Falling bodies, even when there's air resistance, both of those situations, with and without air resistance, are differential equations. When we talk about draining a tank, talking about the remaining volume or the height, the changing height, whatever you want to talk about when you're draining a tank, 
all of that can be modeled with differential equations. The one there is for the change in the height of the liquid in the tank. And finally, when we suspend cables, we can talk about the tension on those cables, um, the change in the height, the vertical distance with respect to the horizontal distance, talking about the changes in tension as we move along this suspended cable. So differential equations, incredibly useful in a whole lot of different applications. I'm not going to dive into all of these right now, um, but we're going to talk more in depth about many of them as we move through the course. For right now, what you need to be able to do is set this stuff up, all right? Set these equations up, and that's, that's all you need to do.